13 years old and I don't really know what I'm expecting. My mom and dad talked with me about setting an example for the kids there and that got my nerves kind of up and that, that's one thing that I'm kind of nervous about. I'm Julian Roberts. I'm 13 years old. Youth have less experience in the world and to see the other world besides theirs is kind of important because the fact that other people do not have a place like a house to call home is pretty hard. I want these people to have a house, a place to call home. I'm Sheila Mulliken and I think a characteristic of this era is to be very focused on my needs and what my world looks like. And seeing people who live life differently expands your view of the world. Sometimes you learn things, beautiful things from those people, and sometimes you learn that you have gifts and something to offer to them. And so I'm excited about working alongside the youth and I think it's going to be a sweet time for them to learn that they have the power to make a difference. They have gifts they can share with other people, they can serve and do things that matter and that the world can be different because of something that they've done. Welcome to all of you. I'm sure I've met some of you before. I see some faces I remember. We get to cross an international border, so most of this talk is just about that. Uh, we're all going to get in our caravan. The uh, highway just ends uh, at the Mexico border. Uh, it's a random stop and check. Okay, hey, but he's been here. This is his sixth time. The guy from Louisville? Yeah. He's a microbiologist. He's not very confident about the water. Not with me, either. that's why I have a bunch of it in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that? We're pulling out and throwing it. I'm wearing shorts. I didn't pull out in front. like uh, shirts, uh, all the money that is made here goes towards their summer vacation. Any questions so far? No? Alright, let's go. Ready to go, so they just pop it on and construct it. It's pretty efficient. They have they only started last week and they have. So we can continue this way. Any questions? And we also ask we can never come beyond this red brick. This is the boys' living area, and we want to keep it private. Gracias to the cooks because they work really hard and be very gracious. Um, and then after dinner, we're all responsible to clean up after ourselves.
Uh, I'm Carson Campbell. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I'm here to uh, give a little bit back to uh, to my fellow man. There's very few other settings in which you can just detach from the worries of life. Yeah, and it's more a connection, hu human connection, because you're connecting to all these people, and you're connecting with each other as interns, and the boys. If they reflect a little bit, the interns are probably saying to themselves, wow, you know, I get to be here for a whole summer. And they're not really thinking about the fact that they're not getting paid a thing, because they don't mm -hmm. consider it you know, a job. So I think the interns also see it as a privilege because they see people come down here for a week and just love the connection they make with the boys or this place. And then after a week they go home. When you think about it, you're always humbled by the fact that anything that we deal with is not really not, relevant compared yeah. to the struggles that the boys have been through, you know. Once you become their like their friend and they're with you all the time, like there's just their openness and their joy, just how willing they are to like love still, even though people have hurt them so much. And so I got involved mostly because I was drawn to the just boys. to the to the boys at the orphanage, and I also love working with the families. I'm just so thankful for everything this organization has given us. We met each other here, and just the the growth I've. I still have so much to grow, I have so much ways to go, but I, I have seen a lot of growth in both of us because of being down here, and I think that I'm, I will always be grateful and will always want to be connected. Okay, it's Tuesday. Um, today was our travel day, so we got on the plane in Nashville, and then <laughs> and we took some buses to the Project Mexico site in San Diego, and then we all crossed the border together. It was very interesting. And when we arrived in Mexico at the orphanage, it was very welcoming and really felt welcomed and really started enjoying it right away. One of my favorite things was when we did the tour of the orphanage overall. That was really neat to see where the boys stayed and um, just you know, how the whole place was set up, so that was really cool. We've been given an orientation about what's here and uh, what we can do and what we cannot do, where we, where we can go, where we can't go. And uh, we're supposed to work for four days. Two of those days is roofing, so I expect that to be hard. But it could be fun. So yeah. And then we talked about what the rest of the week would look like and what groups we are working with to build houses for the families. And that was pretty much it for today, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is my second year at Project Mexico. Last year I came as a volunteer with my mom and my girlfriend. And after we were done building and we were kind of debriefing on the last night, 
I was talking to Eric, and Eric had told my mom that he wanted me to come back as an intern. And so I was just kind of talking to him about the application process and coming back down. And so I told Eric that if I wanted to come down, I really wanted to do a lot of media stuff. So I'm studying journalism at Ole Miss. So kind of what I've been doing is, along with helping other interns with the construction aspect, I've also been taking pictures, I've been writing blogs for the website, and I've been trying to capture the essence of Project Mexico to help spread the word. So deciding to apply to an intern and basically give up my summer away from friends and family in the United States was a it was a tough decision. But at the end of the day, it just felt right. And having the opportunity and having previously discussed it with Eric to come here and not only be an intern but almost be a storyteller and help share Project Mexico's message, it just felt the right thing to do. Because people that come here, they fall in love and they get addicted to the work, to the boys, to everything going on because it's such a great place. It's tough leaving the United States because you're giving up a lot of comfort and luxuries. But I've only been here probably close to two weeks and I just don't miss any of it because you realize what makes you happy in life and it's not about what you have or who you are. It's about the people you're spending the time with. Bon appétit. I got to serve there and I loved doing it and serving and hanging out with the people who were living in the community that we were serving and we also were like building another building sort of like this. So I really wanted another experience. Buenas noches. Y parece como 
I remember the first time I came uh, to Project Mexico. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like the way you have to camp at the ranch, you get to at least experience to a certain degree what people live like throughout their entire lives here in Mexico. But like, we build the home, you see it from the ground up, and then you see the, the end of the home build, the family comes in, and you know, it's the mom, the dad, sometimes the grandma, the grandpa, the kids, the cousins, like there's 12 people living at home. And the mom like pours her heart out, and I was like, like turned away and bit my upper lip so I wouldn't cry, but I was like, wow, that's, that's powerful. What took you a few hours, like, is gonna last them a lifetime. You know, we hand off the key to the home, father blesses the home, and then, yeah, the mom, you know, the fire, the tears come and everything, and it's like, wow, these people are like, it's life-changing for them, so. This is like, to me, the, the purest form of volunteer, because it's like everybody has the same, it's like a selfless, a selflessness that's like among all of the volunteers. Nobody's doing this so that they can get it on their resume or because I just want to feel good about myself for a little while. It's like, I think it's because people generally want to like share the, the love that they have for others. Being sent out, we know that it's not easy. So in your quiet time this morning, I encourage you to think of God's power. Think how that power has brought you to something. We went to our work site for the first time, which was very surprising because it was both the position and how small it was for the cost it was because you don't really realize how small it is until you see it. But it was pretty small and a very awkward position on a cliff. We began with uh, leveling out the ground and setting up the boards for the house and then um, started mixing cement which was a lot of work and I'm very sore from that. The cement we made I would say it was like homemade cement. Um, it's not really what you usually see and uh, there was a lot of concrete involved and so we had to split bags of concrete and they were really heavy and I did a lot of that. It was, uh, I, I didn't like that. We had a tough time of it all but we pushed through it and we finished on time and I think it was really fun. The neighborhood people around us were really friendly. We at one point we sat down and had a break and there were a bunch of kids at the bottom of the hill waving at us um, and saying hi. Everybody was really kind and even the lady who let us use her bathroom was just welcoming and really hospitable and wanting to welcome us into our home. And then we had some time to um, sit with the boys and watch them play soccer and basketball. And it was very fun. We got to see the sunset over the horizon. And then we had a group time where we talked about our day and reflected. And then we sang campfire songs around the campfire. And then we went to bed. <laughs> I just finished my fourth year at University of Cincinnati and this is my third year as an intern here at Project Mexico. I wanted to be an intern since I set foot on this ranch when I was 15 years old. I came down as a volunteer twice, once when I was 15, once when I was 17 and I wasn't able to become an intern until 2016. I just, I love everything about it. It's doing good work with good people, it's an incredible community. 
Um, I love being able to use my Spanish to help people. I didn't get to build stuff. Who doesn't like building stuff? I remember my second time as a volunteer, the family's grandmother lived down the hill. It was a pretty steep hill, and every morning she was just come hiking up that hill with the biggest grin, this little old grandma, and just her joy was ebullient. And a classic first world person might look at these facts and be like, they don't have this, they don't have that, how could they possibly be happy? But these people are just so grateful for every blessing that the Lord has given them. It's so beautiful and it's, it's really grounding. It helps you learn what matters. I've seen a lot of really beautiful transformations even in one week. It's a really great place for especially teenagers and kids. It's good to push yourself out of your comfort zone even when you don't think you're capable. You can learn a lot about the world around you and yourself and I'd recommend people to um, find what makes them tick even if you don't think you're capable of it before you do it. I never thought I would be leading sites and driving stick shift vehicles across international borders, but here I am doing it every other day and it's a lot of fun. I have a really cool job. <laughs> Headed to the work site, and we are one. We're going to be building metal panels on it because it's our uh, best surface area to build on. Um, so, most of these panels are 14 by 8 feet. And we're on the other side of the room. battery that's about double the size so we're going to start the day everybody trying to load up their drill
can't. I have to go Is this going in the center or in the corner? Center. Amen. Boys first. My impressions first, I was scared, like from coming from the last, the last orphanage that I was, and it was just new. I remember I thought like it was a two, two hours traveling from there. I went back there and it's just like 30 minutes, but I remember at that time. And when I arrived here, I was scared. I remember uh, seeing a man there and he was just introducing me to everyone and he was just really nice. I was scared at the beginning, but then it kept gaining confidence. All together we're a family because we're just, I don't know, you can think it's a sad thing that we lost our parents, but I don't think we see it like that because the confidence between us and everything. I don't know how actually a family feels, but it this really feels good and it's just really nice how you can get into church and you can get into sports. We can travel in vacations and it's it, it feels really nice and sometimes I have feel like people outside from the orphanage, like when I meet people in school, they don't have the same opportunities that I have in here. We eat a lot. I, I have bring my friends in here and they, they are like, well, I eat better here than outside in my house. It's a weird thing because I was closest with the guys who have lived here and right now I'm, I'm the, older, the oldest one so I can be like that friend with everyone and I have to be a good example. I remember since I arrived here, um, I knew the world was bigger. I remember I was younger and you know you can see like how the sky touched the ground kind of and when I was younger I used to think like the world just was my world. But when I traveled here and I saw people coming from different different countries, I decided I have to I have to see that. So that's like kind of my dream from when I was young. up and we did prayers and we ate breakfast and we had a reflection time. I think that's one of my favorite things this week is the reflection time. Um, I think it's just a really good time to reflect on what we're gonna do that day. We got up this morning and had breakfast and did prayers and uh, did quiet time again and then That made no sense. Guys, y'all get to clean this off. <laughs> okay, so we had breakfast and quiet time. And then uh, we went to the side again and um, started by putting, uh, we put up the walls today and the roof, and or part of the roof. It really started to look like a house. Um, the concrete pad turned out really good after yesterday's work and after we had put the frames on and the whole structure was put together we started wrapping chicken wire around the whole house with paper around the sides of it and we that took a long time it was tough work getting the um, screws to drill into the through the chicken wire and into the paper and then through the metal that was really tough everybody had a tough time drilling after that we went to get some ice cream that was lots of fun um, that was actually the third ice cream I had that day because two ice cream trucks came by while we were building and I had ice cream both times uh, dinner was great today the foods awesome you could never go hungry here. Um, and then after that we had free time and played soccer with the boys, which was so fun. We had a bunch of funny things happen. Someone got hit or someone got knocked down or... Uh, I don't know why that's funny, it just is. <laughs> yeah. 
And then we pulled a prank on one of our friends during the interview because I don't know who planned it, but that was fun. So yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a dusty day because we complete the third day of work and also we're going to great vespers this evening. As Elijah took advantage of his time, let's take advantage of ours. Once again, our quiet time. I first heard about Project Mexico around two years ago. So we gathered a bunch of youth volunteers and we were like, let's just let's just go for it. We don't really know what to expect, but like why not? It's in Tijuana, it's a beautiful experience. We hoped that it would be. So we came down here and it was a really big surprise and a shock because first of all we came in thinking like building a house in four days, like that's impossible. Like there's no way we can do that. And the the physical work and the mental work is a lot and so it took me and the girls that I was with it took us aback because we were like this is insane building concrete and mixing stuff and drilling and hammering we have never done anything like that before in our lives so it was such a weird but um, eye-opening experience and then the ranch itself and the boys here are so cool and so open to meeting new people even if you just grab a soccer ball and go play with them like they don't care who you are they don't know your name but as long as you're open and willing to play with them they're excited and so happy to join you I just had this feeling in my heart that I said like I really need to come back here but not as a volunteer but as an actual intern because coming here for one week is a beautiful experience but it's not enough. I feel like leaving is was so hard for me because I built so many friends friendship with the boys. I just know as of right now that this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love to do. I want to help people and I want Project Mexico to be in my life forever. assembly line. Uh, originally Minnie was replaced. But I replaced her. Yeah, you, uh, Hannah has replaced her. Because. Um, the bees were asked by Eric. But yeah, this is how we make lunch. So we try to be the volunteers every day. So we do it as quick as possible. That's this is jelly. for you, Mr. This Mike. This is Mr. Mike's. With the Dexter's jelly. He's not listening. Oh, 
Oh, I yell at him how I'm smart. It's a secret. It's a secret. That's the Mr. Oh, Mike special. Okay, guys, here's the deal. If we can, it is currently, what time? What time? That's the one the that. Oh, it's already And my principal duties are supervising the entire orphanage staff, as well as ensuring um, kind of the general well-being of the boys and creating a program um, that will lead them into being productive young men. City, we have space for about eight more boys. Right now we have 17. We should be receiving four more boys um, within these summer months, probably in August. I think our orphanage is specifically unique because of the services that we provide. So kind of within the state government and the social services, we've been renowned like various times uh, for providing a program that really takes the boy from young, from in a situation where they're abused or just entirely abandoned, um, and seeing them through, if they choose, uh, you know, University. And so the process of that is um, is different than other orphanages. First, because we have 17 kids, a lot of orphanages have in the hundreds. We have a boy who is in the neighborhood of um, a family that we built for. His family wasn't being built for, but he was in a lot of the photos. Um, just that's sort of a neighborhood kid. And then, um, you know, years later, we received him as as one of our boys here. Um, so just kind of interesting, full circle, I think, um, you know, a lot of our boys come out of poverty, you know, and so I think that some of those circles are even smaller. So here we really tried to instill a sense of family in the boys. I think that um, one of the greatest things that I've learned is that attachment is super important. It's important for all humans and that happens <laughs> by just spending time together, just being, you know, in a crammed office um, for hours on end just because we want to be together, you know, spending family vacations, traveling, you know, 15 hours south to camp on a beach for a week and, um, and then also supporting the boys through things that might be either difficult or just going to doctors appointments or you know the big stuff with them and, and celebrating their joys and being there to pick them up. It's kind of hard to believe that you can have a family with 17 but I think that um, overwhelmingly that's the feeling here from both boys and staff. And there's this weird like, that's weird, that could be that's weird. Wait, wait, what is this game? You're in, uh, oh geez, wait, a Miami. Yes. So one more, one more. This one, okay yeah, Anna. You're in Seattle. Yeah, you're in Seattle. Nice spot that really got sunburned. So yesterday started out with breakfast and prayers like it usually does. And then we went to the work site and one of the orphans actually came with us. His name's Nacho. He's pretty funny. And we got to get to know him while he helped us out yesterday. It was probably my favorite day out of the past three days we've done. It was really fun, I think. We got to, it wasn't as rough as concrete day. We still had to mix, but it wasn't as rough. And we got to stick sticky stuff all over the house. Um, that was an interesting experience. I learned what stucco tasted like. <laughs> not pleasant. And then we did stucco basically all day. That was an interesting experience. I stuck on a wall. It was quite fun. I stood on a ladder. Um, and then afterwards we went to go get tacos. And they were the best tacos I've ever had in my entire life. They were very yummy. First we went and got tacos. And I got cow tongue, which was incredible. Uh, Hannah and I made a, met another one of the boys named Adrian. He's kind of a trickster a little bit, but he, he's, he's fun. We have had over 14,000 volunteers come and build these homes. Mainly groups of youth and young adult leaders, college students who have felt the calling to come and build and give of their spring break, their summer months, to build homes. 
Right now you can hear in the background some of the people that just came from building a home. They're cheering, they're happy, they feel this accomplishment that they actually did something concrete and they left a home for a family, left somebody else in a better state than when they found them. So they come back with a large social sphere and in a large idea of community. They're directly connected with a family somewhere else, somebody outside their world, and it, it grounds them in a way that they couldn't in a virtual universe. But it's not just about helping others, it's about teaching people to be able to help others. That to empowering them so that when they go back to their home communities, they can be that force for change, for good. They can do that small thing in their community that makes the difference in their neighbor's life. The goal was to build hope for families who had no homes and for boys who had no families. And what we find is that the adage that to give is better than to receive is lived at Project Mexico. That people come and give of themselves, not expecting to receive something. And yet, what brings them back and what's allowed us to continue our mission is that what they receive is tenfold what they gave. And I hear it all the time from parents that tell me about the wonderful youth and adults that their children became because they went and gave of themselves and built hope for others and how that replenished their life and completely turned their inward outlook outward towards others to where they could live a life of service. Go, 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 you're fine, you're fine. Go as up and... Just turned 23. I just took the job. Moved down here about two months ago. Graduated college last year. It was funny, first time I came down, I, I didn't have a tent or anything. I tented with Eric and Zach, and I didn't know them that well. And it was really crowded, but all three of us are work trip coordinators now. When you actually go and see the families and you live down here for a while, it's, the lifestyle's different, the perspective's different. The energy is different too, because you don't have that same energy of just coming for a summer. Like, especially now, my position is more with is completely with home building. I live on the orphanage, but it's it's a lot different perspective. After my first summer, I was like, I'm not going to come back. And then something happened where I was like, I'll come back and help out. And then I graduated college, so I don't know. I, when I go back to Seattle, where I went to high school, and I hang out with friends, I, a lot of it, like, we'll go to the bar and we'll talk about, like, what we're doing. And a lot of them were miserable, like, with what they were doing. And they're making good money, and there's nothing more than that. It's kind of like, well, and then I tell them, like, I was telling them, like, what I was thinking about doing. And they're, oh, that, that's awesome. I mean, you know, it's a blessing to be able to have this job, to be asked to do it, instead of just trying something else, not being happy, but having enough money for whatever. You know, you want to live, you only have one life to live and you kind of want to live it the right way. And so this is a very good opportunity. It's very natural for me to be down here because I grew up with all boys and now I'm surrounded by 20 orphan boys. You know, wherever, wherever I go after this, it won't be broken. I can always come back and, or wherever they are in life. It's not like when I tell people, oh, you should come down, it's like, oh yeah, you should get involved full time. It's like, no, just come down, it's good for you. You're really just helping out another person. It doesn't matter whether they're rich or poor, you're just helping them out. With all the energy you have, I feel like that this place can teach people that. It's like, we share common humanity with all people, especially those you live close by at home.
whether you live like people, you live in Nashville, you live in Jackson, you live in Seattle, it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, people are put in front of us every day. And that's what I'm trying to learn from this. Oh, French? Yeah. Okay. We had liturgy this morning, and uh, which was in Spanish, so that was really interesting to follow along with. See you, Adrian. Afterwards, we um, uh, played around for a while on the soccer slash basketball court. And uh, I made a new friend, his name's Moises, and uh, he's, he, like, he uh, was um, taking uh, photos at that time, and it was kind of funny. We went and played some soccer and basketball, and then after that we went to the beach, which was very pretty, and I mostly played soccer and stuff with the boys down at the beach instead of swimming, because I don't usually swim at the beach anyways. And then we came back down to the pavilion for an orientation on the orphanage. And I think that was, I learned a lot about the orphanage. I really enjoyed it. And it seems like they have a great family here. They really just kind of develop a friendship and a bond. They might get four new boys this coming summer and that's really exciting. And it was a good day and now we're just hanging around the orphanage and eating nachos and having a fun time. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and I'm a pretty cool girl. <laughs> It doesn't matter how we are, Pero Dios está. because we can always depend on Him. Y en este momento, vamos a alabar. 
Bendito sea nuestro Dios, eternamente nosotros, y por el fin de nuestro manchis salvo, tu Dios por nuestra salma. Y cada vez que nuestra vida en Cristo, vuestro Dios. Ahora vamos a ver fiesta. So yesterday was our last build day. We finished, we put another layer of stucco on the house and then painted it and um, finished up the roof. We had to sift sand for this final layer and I did that a lot and that was actually really fun. It was very enlightening how to sift sand. Um, and then I made lunch with a couple other people and that's been fun, a little, we made a little assembly line to make the lunch and I thought that was really fun. Got to meet some of the family, give toys to some of the grandkids. It was a lot of fun to get to meet some of their extended family and just interact with them and play with the kids. I think that was a really fun experience. And then we had our last meeting with our group about what we enjoyed from the site, what our favorite food was, and what we wanted to take home, whether physically or mentally. I walked away from that house saying, oh my gosh, I, I built a house with like 20 some other people for people who needed a house. I want to go back and the reason for that is
the experience was incredible. And it was so much fun and we got to meet a lot of the boys and hang out with everybody and just building the house was awesome and an awesome experience and I'd love to go back. Giving the house to the family was one of the most rewarding things of this trip to see their smiling face and um, I just really enjoyed every second of it and I spent time with my friends and it was an amazing experience. So you basically get to live this life that's ideal how you're wanting to help people out, you know, stay off your electronics. Because you're going to this place where people really need help and you're building them a house out of like your own free will. So it was a really neat experience and I'm so glad that I went and I can't wait to go back again.